We'll, we'll just wait for the others to just join and then we'll start. Um, so, um, so Thomas, I've actually message WhatsApp to you the number that we were talking about yesterday. So you can contact that pastor. Um, I have sent it on this number 974277457. I think that's the number I have of you. So I've sent uh, the pastor's number. You can check with him. Okay, let's uh, let's get started. <clears throat> Right. Okay. So we've been looking at, uh, you know, developing counseling skills um, for the, uh, you know, in a cell group leader, or if we are cell group leaders, developing uh, counseling, counseling skills in us, right? Um, so one of the things that we need to uh, understand is that, um, you know, in, for those of people in our cell group, we need to give them uh, time. And we need to give them time and give them space uh, because people will uh, need to feel comfortable enough in order to open up and share right? Sh share about their problems which could be because of their own mistakes right uh, or share about what they have done wrong uh, it, it takes time now they want to solve it and they know that it's because of their problem i mean it's because of their choices their decisions or maybe it was because of someone else but um they would uh, definitely want to wait and see uh you know till they feel confident enough to you know, share that right and the reason is this that they don't want to be made fun of they want to know whether they can really trust you as a person um and so um they just want to wait and see so you give them that time you know maybe sometimes you know that they this person has this issue this person has this problem and uh, you know, needs to be sorted, but uh, give them that time, give them that space, right? Um, continue to speak the word of God, depend on the Holy Spirit. Okay, so Isaiah 50, verses 4 and 5, the Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. Not to speak a word in season to him, he is weary. The one, the one who is weary. So the word of God spoke uh, you know ministered in the season or in the right time to the one who is weary brings about a lot of uh, change in that person you know the, the weariness is taken away the discouragement is taken away the person is revived renewed so speak the word of god the word of god uh, does that and does the change right um, depend on the holy spirit and isaiah 11 verses 2 and 4 Spirit of the Lord, it's talking about the Spirit of the Lord, and it says this, you know, uh, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and shall make him of, verse 3, and make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge uh, after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor, and reprove with equity the meek of the earth, and so on. So we see that the the, the Spirit of God, the the ministry of the Holy Spirit through a person's life, you know, brings about um, you know so much of discernment. Even you know what we uh, beyond our natural senses, right? Beyond our natural ability. So, in counseling, uh, we know that yes, they are. You are you know discerning. You are you know, based on your experience, knowledge. Not, you know your your understanding of people and all that. Um, when people share some things, you are you are discerning. Okay, this is what um, sorry, this is what you know they are capable of. This is what they have done and and all that. But even beyond that, the Holy Spirit, who knows 
the source of the issue, the the problem, and not just the source of the issue and problem, but also the solution, the wisdom, um, you know, of solving it. He brings it. Right? So depend on the spirit of God. Depend uh, or minister or speak the word of God. Right. Um, that is why you know Christian counseling has so much more to offer to the world. Right, because it goes beyond just cause and effect of human behavior, right? Yeah, or it just goes beyond beyond just the psychological, just the mind. It goes to the root of the issue um, and goes into the spirit realm as well, right? Okay, then be practical. Whatever you're suggesting, you know, let it be practical. Let it be doable. Um, it doesn't have to be always, you know, super spiritual. Some simple things can actually solve things. Uh, so be practical. Um, direct the individual to get professional help. Now, this is this is something very important. You know, now we know we understand that we are not trained counselors. You know, if you are a trained counselor, then you can handle some of the you know the difficult. Uh, uh, situations and challenges or the different uh, the difficult um, uh, circumstances that the person is in uh, you're able to you know bring the counsel of god uh, you're able to counsel them but if not right if if not um, then it is best to direct that person to a counselor right to get professional help to, because if it requires a lot of time, okay, if it requires repeated, you know, visits, and, uh, and and if it's a complex problem, you feel that okay, I, you know, sometimes what happens is okay, as a pastor or as a cell group leader, you know, you're saying okay, I, these people are here, I need to, I need to solve it. No, you don't have to. You don't have to solve all the problems. You don't have to have all the answers, right? So in a cell group, so this is the thing, no? This is, this is some things that which intimidate a cell group leader and uh, which actually discourage a cell group leader or cell group leader ends up feeling, you know, I'm, you know, uh, I'm not able to do this. So you're not expected to know all the answers. You're not expected to solve all the problems. So just direct that person to a good Christian counselor. Okay, uh, or a counseling ministry, and say, okay, now you know you need to do this. This is what is best. Okay, um, uh, with that, I would also say you need to guard your time, you know, because when it comes to these kinds of things, when it comes to typically counseling um, uh, 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 in general, you know, it, it's going to take some time, right? You're talking to people, you're finding out, you're asking questions. So, you know, what are your priorities, and what is what are things that is uh, that are required of you? Let that not suffer. Right? Guard your time. You, know, you can say, okay, we can do this another time. Uh, nothing wrong. Or you can say, okay, now we've looked at it till now. Okay, we've spent about one hour already on this. You know, we've been, so let's let's meet another time. You no, know, no, um, because you need to do other things and you need to focus on other things maybe there's family um that and or maybe there are other important things that you need to do uh, at work maybe in ministry um so no need to ignore all that right ignore the priorities ignore no need to ignore that so you can always say okay let's meet another time how let you know or maybe right now is not the time Okay, uh, maybe a person calls and then starts to talk about this and the other, and you know, they they are taking a lot of time. Already twenty minutes, thirty minutes has gone by, and you know, it's just going around in circles. It's not being solved. Nothing is being reached. So just say, okay, let's you know, let's take it another time. Um, yeah, definitely we will. We'll you know we'll do that, and we will you know talk about this. But today, um, let's. Let's stop right now. Let's put a pause right now, and then we'll continue. Okay, so guard your time. Okay, and uh, when necessary, 
if there is a need for correction, you know, then for you know a correction for the person, then you need to do that. Right, speak the truth, bring in the correction, but do it out of love. Do it with honor. You know, that's the other thing. You no, know, no need to dishonor the person. Right, bring correction in love. Bring correction with honor, um, and let the person know that whatever they have said or whatever they have done or the choices they have made um, that that is not correct that is not right okay um, so there could be different situations like husband and wife or teen young adult you know kind of a, a situation where you're you know you're sharing the counsel or bringing the counsel of god always remember not to cross those boundaries you know you know maybe if you're if you're a man then it's best that you bring in the counsel uh, to another other other man right and uh, same gender because uh, you know that's the safest boundary because people are sharing their heart they are you know it's it's all it's always possible that you know, emotionally, you get uh, maybe attached to that person, etc. So, best to avoid that, and it's important to avoid all those things. So, know your boundaries, right? And 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 keep them. Don't cross those boundaries, right? Um, so, uh, so maybe the first time or the second time, you might have to, you know, uh, you might have to do that. You know, as a cell group leader, because they are in the cell group. But then, um, uh, if this thing continues, you know, if the, uh, then you can always direct them to another godly uh, person of the same gender. You know, if you're a, if you're a man, and then you know this woman is this lady is you know asking for counsel, you know, direct that person to another uh, other other person, other woman, other lady. Right, and uh, and if you're a lady, and there's this man uh, who's asking for counsel and, and all that, direct them to another, other, another person, other other man, right? So the same gender. So that always, um, you know, enables that your boundaries are not crossed. Okay, okay. So here's a you know good piece of advice: you are never responsible for the pain of those who have ignored your counsel. Maybe you know you've given your best and you've shared okay this is the heart of god uh for you in this matter this is what you need to you know this is a suggestion this is what what god says um and this is what you need to do now no because it's up to them to follow it right so you've, you've given that now they might do something completely opposite from what you've you know what you've shared what you've counseled okay completely opposite and as a result of that, there are consequences, right? Maybe the consequences are very negative consequences in the sense uh, they it did, things are not going well. Okay, they completely ignored, and uh, now things are bad. It's become worse. Now there is no need for you to feel guilty, okay? Because you have done as a self group leader, you have done your best, right? You have directed them. To the word, you, from the word you have shared, and uh, um, you know that you know that, that was the that's the best thing, and uh, it is very clear, black and white. So shared, but that counsel was not taken. Right? It was not heeded, uh, and something that was opposite of that was done. So in which case, the consequence was, uh, or the result of that. It was bad. So you are not responsible for the pain that they are going through. So there's no need for you to feel guilty. Or, you know, sometimes we feel, oh, I should have been a little more forceful. I should have stopped that person. No, no, you did your best. You suggested and you said this is what this is the best thing uh, for you to do. And uh, the person didn't take it, the person didn't carry it out. And as a result, you know, all this was happening. So there's no need for you to feel guilty uh, and condemn yourself, right? And uh, so uh, you're not responsible for the pain of those who ignored the counsel. Okay. Okay. So, um, you know, uh, lastly, in 
in, in this, you know, developing oneself as a cell group leader or developing other cell group leaders. Um, some things that we see is, uh, you know, some values and disciplines, uh, a summary of that is, uh, you know, to live a life free from habitual sin. Okay. So to keep our lives free from habitual sin, very important. Now, uh, you know, uh, we know sin is deceitful, sin destroys, um, sin can be, um, you know, it, it's it's a destiny blocker. It blocks us from reaching our destiny, blocks us from, prevents us from reaching our full potential in God. It keeps us in a place of uh, imprisonment. Right? There's no progress. Uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, if we are tolerating sin, if we are compromising and, uh, you know, there's no spiritual growth, there's no joy, right? So keep your life free from it. You know, we need to keep our life free from habitual sin. Okay? When we say habitual, you know, it's like, it's not a one-time thing, it's just repeating. It's on repeat mode, right? Over and over and over again. Okay, so we need to deal with those kinds of things that have become a habit, you know, habitual sin, which is, uh, you know, which is um, a kind of become a pattern or a cycle, right, over and over again. So we need to keep our lives free from it. Like we need to take all precautions, we need to take all measures and keep our lives free from habitual sin, knowing that sin hardens our heart, knowing that sin destroys lives, right? Okay, so that's that's one thing. So you, you we be discerning as believers, as leaders. Uh, secondly, a fully developed prayer life, okay? Now, when it comes to uh, prayer, it's not just corporate prayer, you know, with, with family, with uh, other, you know, with the spouse or with uh, cell group members, um, but it is also prayer on our own, right? our, our time when we are alone with God. So, so both, you know, uh, develop that prayer life. It has to be uh, developed. It's not something that will happen automatically. I think uh, we know by now, you know, as believers that, you know, these are things that that will not happen out automatically, but we need to be, uh, we need to pursue, right? Be intentional, factor in that time and say, okay, from this time to this time, you know, I'm going to be spending time with God, okay? And, uh, and make it a daily thing, right? Okay, then the um, uh, third thing is that um, that we need to earn the respect and earn the trust of our cell group members. Right now, uh, like we studied, you know, I think it was in last last class, last session, um, last week, we saw that okay, um, you know, people can follow a leader because of the title. You know, because someone has given the title, someone has appointed you as a leader, uh, you know, and people can follow because of the title. But that needs to change to a place where people are following because they have seen and they've seen your life and uh, they've, they've seen what, you know, uh, what our work is and uh, they've seen what we can how we serve and therefore they make a choice to follow okay, so which means that um they've observed and now they're giving permission to lead giving per us the permission as leaders to lead them right and they want to follow now how did that change happen it's because they've observed they've seen okay so we need to understand that uh, we need to earn that respect, earn that trust, and earn that permission. Okay, so we need to live a consistent uh, life, a life that uh, of servanthood, like wanting to serve, wanting to minister. So people see that. Okay, um, you know, yes, this person is authentic, is sincere, and therefore I will give you know permission for that person to uh, to lead. Right. So. Um, uh, you know, I remember once uh, when we had our, you know, church membership class. We have a membership class, right? Um, so those who want to become members now, everybody attends church, but 
to be a member, formal member, you know, there is a process. So we have a membership class, people come, attend it, and they know what is it, they understand, okay, what does it mean to be a member? Okay, what is church membership all about? You know, and some of the information about, you know, the working of this church, the structure of the church, all that is shared during the membership class. So during that class, they also share why they chose to become members, okay, and how they decided to be members of the church. So one such person, you know, one such membership class uh, meeting, I remember this person sharing that, you know, that that they, that he, uh, along with his family, has been attending church. So, uh, but he waited for two years, okay, and uh, in those two years he was coming, he was coming, attending church, worshiping, uh, but he waited for two years to see, to study the life of the of the pastor to see, okay, uh, you know, is this a person that I can, I can truly, you know, me and my family, you know, I can truly come and be planted in, the, you know, in this particular church, right? So is this a person whom I can trust? Or is this person saying something and doing something? And so he waited for two years. Now, now not everybody does that, but this person did, right? So, it takes time, right, to earn the trust of a person uh, or earn the respect of uh, another person whom we are leading. You know? And it, it's especially true in cell cell groups also. So, right, the earned respect uh, of cell group member. Okay, the cell group, like we said, the cell group and the cell group leader uh, does not function in isolation. So what do we mean by that? It means that it's not it's not separate from the church. We need to understand that. So this particular model I'm talking about, right? This particular model that we've been studying, uh, uh, this is a model of discipleship, right? So it's not separate from the church. It's not alienated from the church, but it's very much a part of the vision and it is a ministry of the church, okay? So the cell group leader or the cell group cannot be uh, distanced from the local church or it cannot be not involved in the local church. It has to be involved, involved in the life of the church, in, involved in the activities, the ministry of the church. Okay, so so whatever the, the cell group, you know, the, for the cell group leaders, there could be meetings, there could be trainings, there could be maybe certain prayer and uh, you know other things happening equipping training now the cell group leader if i'm a cell group leader i need to make sure that okay i'm there for those you know i i give uh, or i plan and uh, prioritize those okay so here is a meeting that's happening and it's um, you know it's a it's a scheduled on a particular date and you know make every attempt to attend that it's very important. You know, it could be a training meeting. It could be a, you know, just a, a meeting of all the cell group leaders, just to catch up, just to see, okay, what is the, maybe the pastor wants to know what is happening, and um, you know, all the cell group leaders uh, being asked to share what is happening in their cell groups and so on. So, um, make make every um, attempt to be part of that, to be part of that uh, uh, meeting. Okay, so which means that you are involved right in the local church okay then a strong desire to share christ's love with everyone who will anyone who will listen uh, and the determination to help uh, cell group members reach their friends for christ okay so evangelism and also uh, uh, you know outreach and evangelism uh, and to have a strong passion and desire to do that right okay so so these are some things to um, you know, uh, think about these are some things that we need to understand when it comes to cell group leaders, values, and disciplines. Okay, right. So the next section, you know, we've come to the third section of um, of this resource of this course, which is about raising up disciples. <clears throat> okay, so we saw that. Okay, uh, I first. Um, follow the Lord and I myself make sure that I'm a disciple of the Lord 
even before enabling others to do so. Now that I'm following, now that I'm I'm leading uh, or, or the cell group, now how can I raise up others in the group, in the cell group to be leaders? Okay, because there are potential leaders right, in the cell group um, or people who have the heart uh, and the ability. So how can I raise them up? And how can I? How can we do this? Is there a process? Okay. So we're going to look at um, uh, some things, and uh, we're going to look at some of these general things right, about church leadership, about raising leaders, and so on. Okay. So even before that, I just want to know, like, um, you know, if there's any questions uh, based on what we shared so far, you know, we can uh, we can look at that. Any questions <clears throat> about the cell group leader or some of the things that we looked at today or in previous class. Any questions at all? Okay, we can we can look at that. Okay. Um or any challenges of you know this whole thing of cell groups. Okay, no no questions from Kiran. Okay. Fine. Okay, so let's let's look at um, uh, yeah, uh, Aaron. Okay, it's clear. Fine. Okay, let's look at um, you know uh, the other uh, aspect of raising up leaders. Okay, so raising up leaders. Um, so as disciples, we are to go make disciples. Okay, so what is the process that we said? You know. The people come to follow Jesus, they become believers, they have a transformation in their lives. So from being believers, they learn to follow the Lord Jesus, they learn to, you know, uh, live out a life of a believer. And they, we call that being disciples because they are following Jesus, following his teaching, the person and the principles and the precepts. So they are now disciples and from being disciples uh, as disciples as they discover their call and the gifting and they receive the anointing from from god they move on to be you know as disciples they move on to be uh, or, or you know i shouldn't say move on but as disciples they learn to minister okay so they are now they are disciples but they are also ministers right they are ministering like they've recognized the call of God. They identified, okay, this is what God has called me to do in the body, uh, which is in the church, in the local church, outside of the local church. You know, maybe there are certain things that God has called them to do. So they recognize that, they identify that, and they're doing that. Okay? And uh, so as ministers, then they come to, a, uh, uh, come to a place of being leaders, you know, as disciples. So you you never you know stop being a believer. You never stop being a disciple. You never stop being a minister. Uh, but you continue in all this, and you continue, and then you come to a place of leading others, right? Leading others. Um, so being a spiritual father or being a spiritual mother, right? Leading others. So um, so in doing so, in leading others. There is, you know, you. What are we doing? We are also taking others along that same path, right? From being believers to disciples to ministers and leaders. Right? So you're raising up others to become all this, right? to become leaders, the ministers to become leaders. Okay, so here are some some thoughts about being leaders in the church. Right, or church leadership. Okay. Um, you know, some things to consider here. You know, some these are some very interesting, um, you know, nuggets of wisdom. Right, great leaders will build great churches. Okay, average leaders will build average churches, and anti-leaders, which means, you know, your 
and you know you're setting negative examples right anti leaders will harm and break down churches as well as church leaders and their visions for god okay so so this is this is something that is um for us to think about great leaders will build great uh, churches and average leaders will build, build average churches okay so why is leaders know that they must utilize all available leadership to the maximum okay so a wise leader will not uh, you know hamper will not stifle people from raising up as leaders okay because the more leaders you are raising up and the more the leaders realize their potential and they are also you know doing the work of ministry and raising up other leaders we're building a strong church okay and uh, you know where paul talks about how uh, in galatians he talks about how he went and met you know peter and james and and he talks you know they seem to be pillars in the church others who seem to be pillars in the church so you know uh, a leader is like a pillar and uh, the more pillars you have the stronger the the building is the more stable you know the structure is of course needs to have a strong foundation but as it's being raised up the more pillars there are the stronger the the structure right so um so we we you know make sure that the leaders are being equipped and mobilized okay which means they are gathered and they are placed in places of leadership where they are required so that's uh, that's something that we need to continuously do okay because uh, when they when there are leaders and when they're placed in you know that the right place of leadership then they're using their gifts they're using their abilities for the sake of the kingdom and causing growth right see that is what happens right when we looked at um, let me just share that verse and then we'll go and move on right um okay but so i think this we um, saw in ephesians quite recently okay ephesians 4 verses 15 and 16 right speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head christ from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love Okay, so what is Paul saying here? Saying that, you know, we, the whole body is joined and knit together by by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part is doing its share. Okay, so every leader, functioning well, doing their work well, being placed in that position of leadership, using their giftings and everything. What what happens when they are working well? When it causes an effective work of ministry it causes growth of the body okay, growth is in, inevitable when we raise up strong leaders and place them in positions of leader because they are influencing right people for the good and so you know that is what happens okay um, then another thing to understand is that um, uh this also is something that we have learned in kingdom builders course uh, kingdom of god course that um, that success in ministry okay is based on the ability to raise up successors that you need to have who are you know okay if if i'm the leader today but you know if i'm not there tomorrow who are the others who will continue the work a successor Okay, someone who's raised up like how Moses you know, raised up Joshua. There was Caleb uh, also, right? How Moses raised up Joshua, but Joshua was the one who took on, right? Uh, after Moses, the mantle of leadership, right? So, so like that, you know, who are the others who are whom we are raising up to be successors? 
so when we say okay the ministry is successful you know it's it's not complete without a successor one who can continue on the work even stronger maybe maybe better stronger better uh, or bigger than ever before right okay then the great leaders understand how to get everyone to participate okay so because we see you know again in Ephesians 4 we see that okay this is what the fivefold ministry does and the apostle prophet evangelist pastor teacher they equip the church they equip the body of christ all the believers to do the work of ministry this is what they do and when they do that every member is every uh, every uh, believer is doing the work of ministry and that work of ministry is having its effect causes you know it, the end result is that it causes the body to grow and they, everybody is effectively working okay so it's important that uh, you know even before everybody starts working for everybody to participate and right, for everybody to understand this and everyone in the church to understand this and uh, and to to accept it I, I might understand it but i'm not accepted for myself right okay maybe it's for that person maybe it's for that, that person you know uh, that everyone is a minister so to understand to accept and only when i do that do i participate that get involved right so um the great leaders understand this that hey, we need to do everything to make sure that people are involved okay people are not spectators that everyone is involved everyone is participating okay so nobody is you know left out everyone is participating right so they understand that and they do things to make sure that people uh, participate and are involved okay now so in a church and in church leadership we need to understand it's not just the pastor who's committed and fired up and passionate but also the others others who are in the leadership others who are with the lead pastor or the senior pastor right so a leader's effectiveness is greatly influenced by those who are closest to him okay the especially which means that the leadership team okay so how effective is that leader well the team the leadership team uh, their influence their commitment um, determines that okay um the, the so it's not just the leader but it's also the others in the leadership team okay um so some of the things that we saw you know a leader um uh, you know because when people follow a leader because they want to then that's a great achievement and so we need to understand that um, you know that's that's a great that's the greatest thing that people have given permission to be led and also that uh, any investment that we make right um it's you know as leaders because you know we are called to influence raise up others and especially the next generation and the generation after that okay so as leaders you know what are we doing to raise up the next generation that's one thing you know and you know the following generation or maybe even you know the third generation after that you know are we doing anything to to create an impact influence and to raise up that generation as well right because the 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 challenge is faced by maybe our generation is very different from the challenges of the next generation right oh, and the learning experience of the next generation like if you if you think about it you know um like some of us did not have smartphones some of us did not have social media when we were growing up okay you know only i think uh, last year uh, or yeah last year is when i i you know started using instagram <laughs> right so it was qu quite late in using instagram because and i used it for you know i had to learn to use it because of official work right? we were putting out um, you know uh, uh, promo material and all that so there was a also a 
Instagram account. So I need to understand how to how, how it works, how do you you know post things, all that. But it was only last year, right? Quite late. But the next generation, like uh, if you look at my daughter, she grew up using it, you know, from the teenage years. She grew up understanding, uh, you know, uh, what what Instagram is and so on. And and the generation following, you know, my nephew and all that. They their phone is a smartphone. In the sense they that is how they understand it. The TV. It's a flat screen TV. They've not seen any of those huge televisions that we are used to. You know, they don't have any idea of cassette player or not even CD players, right? Um, because those things are not there, you know, are slowly just going out. So their experience, their their environment is totally different. And and some of them are so used to the online things. You know, online classes, online education is something that they are so used. It's part and parcel of their life. Right? Whereas for us, it was not. Right? School meant you go somewhere, and you know, it's nothing on the screen. Right. So, so their challenges are different, and and so also, also you know, spiritually, um, you know, morally, like all the challenges are different. So, if we are raising up. Um, are we investing? I mean, it, it's good to talk about it and say, okay, I'm, we want to raise up leaders, but you know, do we understand the environment in which you know this generation is coming from, the challenges, and you know the generation after that? What is it? Because it's a fast changing thing, right? But the truth never changes. So, in order to raise those gen, uh, that generation, we need to do something. Uh, without compromising the truth, but to be able to take it to them, right, and and raise them up. Okay, so are we doing enough? To uh, are we investing our time, resources, our talents, abilities in doing that? Okay, right. Okay, so we we get into this section of um, how we have all these. Okay, let's say you're a, you have a cell group, you have about. Maybe, maybe 10 to 12 cell group leaders. Okay, now how do we get them? You know, how do we train them uh, into cell leaders? Now they're all members, they're coming, attending. Uh, I'm sure, you know, for those of you who are, you know, uh, leading a cell group or you're part of a cell group, you have you know, people coming, attending, um, taking part actively. Now, how do we raise them up to be cell group leaders, right? For each of them to lead their own cell groups. Okay, so we're going to be looking at that. Okay, uh, what what do we need to do? Is there something that we need to do? Is there something that we need to understand, uh, or you know, will it happen automatically? Right. So all these things. So we will we'll look at into the next class. Uh, we'll start uh, you know uh, this topic in the next class. So training cell members into cell leaders. How do we train them? What do we need to do, and so on? So first thing we we need to understand it's it it is possible, right? Uh, uh, that people can be raised up. It is it is a process. It is going to take time, and uh, one needs to be uh, intentional about it, right? Um, so because there there will be some who will well who who will just come forward. Right, who will just say, okay, who will volunteer and say, okay, I can, I can do this. You know, I want to do this. But there will be many who will not. Right? There will be many who will be just comfortable being who they are. Right? Um, well, they might have hidden potential giftings, um, but they are just comfortable where we are, where they are. So, you know, what do we do in that, such a case? Right? What do we do in such circumstances as leaders um, to be able to, you know, draw out, to be able to encourage, right? and uh, and set them on that path of leadership development, right? Okay, so we'll we'll stop here and we'll look at it from uh, next class onwards. Okay, so let me just. Uh,
so we'll we'll catch up next class and uh,